Good evening. My name is Leroy Cooper. I'm here at the Afro American Museum this evening to pay tribute to our great uncles, grandfathers, and people that came before us to dispel the story about uh, baseball and tell it and see it as it really unfolded. Back to 1885, the first black player to play in Major League Baseball was Fleetwood Walker. Fleetwood Walker, Saul White, was one of the few players that played in Major League Baseball and they really suffered a, 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 a very hard injustice because of the treatment they received from uh, their white counterparts. Uh, they would have to break barrels and tie the wood around their legs to keep from getting spiked from the baseball shoes and there again uh, we invented uh, uh, the shin guard, the face mask, uh, because of a need to protect ourselves from our counterparts. Basically you have to realize that uh, we played a different type of baseball. We played the hit and run, the steal, the speed game that most of the whites were not accustomed to. That was one of the reasons they did not want to play against us uh, because we played a different brand of ball, like basketball now. You know, uh, ever since they had a start in five of blacks, it's, it's, it's changed the course of the game. And baseball is the beginning of that. Uh, we have a, another team here, the Pace Finch Giants, in the late 1800s. They were owned by uh, a white owner, but what they did is they traveled in their own personal private cars in the luxury and eating steak and, and doing all the things that they wanted to do with the shades pulled down and no one realized who they were. Uh, there were a lot of white owners that realized that there were a lot of money to be made in the actual game. So when you look at it, uh, one third of the owners were white, one third of the owners were black males, and one third of the owners were black females. Black baseball goes back to 1867, and it was actually born in Babylon, New York, okay, upstate New York, mm -hmm. and it was the Duke of Earl from England that came in and built a hotel called the Argyle Hotel, and what he did is he hired uh, brothers from the black universities to come and uh, entertain the whites as they came on uh, vacation. What? So this is how it started. These brothers were all educated, okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. College wow. graduates. Wow. And then they were Cuban X Giants. Right. See, a lot of people right now we don't have any owners of uh, baseball teams. No. We you, have you'll any see, managers. you'll see more owners now walking through this exhibit than ever because you're talking about a, a span of 150 years. Wow. We had owners and a. One third of those owners were black females. So the whole de-enfranchising of the Negro League was about gross national product. It was about money. Let me see how I can defunct this league, keep them from being owners, and controlling their product because everybody want to come see us. So right. So now, but we, we, but no. But the, the reality of it was. A contract between two black people was not held up in court as a legal binding contract. It was only Ethel Manley which uh, sued Major League Baseball that she was paid for Monty Irvin. Everybody else basically did not get paid for their players. So they came in and raided the teams and this is why we no longer have any more leaders. These guys were heroes. I mean, not just, you know, they were talking baseball. They actually played the game. And what year, uh, what year did you pitch? I haven't. How many years? Yes. From 32 to 54. That's a long time. Yes, we're pitching. I had pitched uh, 14 years before. Uh, if you can talk a little bit about my dad, you know. Yeah, I knew him well. He's a good ball player. He could play out field too. Yeah. Yeah, he could move around and hit the ball as far as anybody you've ever seen. That's my favorite. Is that book still in publication? Yeah, the Missouri Historical Society. Oh, really? Yeah. Two years too soon. Crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Integrated he played before I did. Maybe a year or so before I started. Mm -hmm. But 
Il m'a fait sur les collines, il veut un coup de pied, il nous dit qu'il pisse. Il veut la pire, il veut pire. Il veut le bon. How much did they pay uh, for all players in Mexico? Oh, man. Oh, man. Like when they sent, when I went to Mexico and they sent me a contract for $125, I thought I was rich, man. Oh, you went to Mexico? Man. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. $125 a month, man. What year? What year did you go to Mexico? <laughs> in 40. 40? Yeah. Oh, y'all were down there in 1942. Yeah. And Pancho Ray Torreon. Mexico City, Veracruz, Cordoba, Veracruz, Monterey, the scene was old. And so when I went to Mexico, played in Mexico, they only would have four foreigners, they called foreigners on the team. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe two Americans, Cuban, or Puerto Rican. What year did you travel with Satchel Paige? What year? Yes. Oh, from the time I started until <laughs> <laughs> Satchel went to the Major League. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. So we want to continue this legacy. The reality is, okay, when you look at the numbers, there's 72 players, mm -hmm. Afro-American players in Major League Baseball, and that's rookie ball all the way through Major League. The Dominican has 1,450, right. and that's a small island. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the numbers are just astronomical. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, all of these spaces, from the inner city community, right. they're lost. Exactly. Because the whole key now is to take third world players mm -hmm. and bring them in, as opposed to uh, taking people from the community, mm -hmm. when in fact, uh, you had a situation where if you didn't play in Major League Baseball, you played in the Negro Leagues, whether you right. were Japanese, right. whether yeah. you were from the House of Dave or whatever. Mm -hmm. Most of them were, were well educated, whether it was through school or just travel. You know, and they, during that period of time, they made the most money. You know, during the Depression, they were still working and making money. So I, I guess the uh, segregation, integration, integration thing was difficult, not just for him, for everybody even came after him for a while, or what? What was that like? Oh, yeah. You know? Sure. <laughs> he didn't end with him. Really? But he had a lot to do with, with, it, with it in him, you know. He took a lot of the pressure. Sure. I mean, you don't know exactly. But they had a temper, man, you know. You see, that's the thing that you see, forget. When you think about what he went through, what he took, knowing he wanted to get somebody to hear, because I told him, I, somebody, somebody asked me about it, I said, well, if they had thrown a black cat out there on the field, I'd take me a phone go back and went over in the dugout. Right, right. That's where I broke the ball first for the cup. Oh, we got to go for the music. Yes. No, no, Jay, Jay got to come out. Yes, I was just coming back because I got to go out there. Curved and broke down Like the back of an ass scratching all the time Who let old Satchel Payne Delivering his fame Hesitation pitch like the point at the cross when a fastball hides itself up in a shimmy slider curve breaking down in a way in a wicked sly grin curved and broke down like the back of an ass scratching all the time who let old satchel pain delivering his fame hesitation pitch or the hook of sugar ray robinson's Lightning over bite. And you there, father, through it all. Yes, catching rhythms of China Pozo Ball, China Pozo Ball. Drumming, China Pozo Balls, drumming like Cuban conga beats to your catches, mitt. Hard and fast, hard and fast, hard and fast, hard and fast, hard and fast. Hard and fast. Yeah. Jumping in the bed before the lights went out of the old Negro Baseball League. I promised you were, Father. Yes, you were. I promised you were, Father. Harbinger. Shockman. Soon. Come.
I love to be here, and thanks for having me on my on your show. My name is Kyla Mack. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate your time.